everyone. Aaron and I are fishing today with Roger Blackstone. He's the club chairman of Lake Coeur d'Alene Anglers Association. And I have driven by this lake a lot. I've seen guys out fishing it, and I'm like, I gotta fish this lake. So we're fishing it today, and we are going after... Chinook salmon. We're gonna fish for the, the landlocked Chinook salmon here on the lake. Uh, this time of year, they're up on the surface. So we're looking to uh, target them on the surface with planer boards. And uh, we'll try to fish for them in the top 30 feet and see what we can do today. Excellent, and how big are, do they run? Well, in the springtime, you'll catch a lot of eight to 12 pound range. Um, in the summertime, when we come into, uh, say July and August, when they start to spawn, our spawners are in the mid 20s. Nice. All right, well, let's go get some fish. All right. It's time for the Northwest Fishing Reports with Aaron Borg, Mike Carey, and Rob Holman. Come along as we travel to hidden gems and fishing hotspots around the Northwest. You'll see a little of everything as we fish with top guides on their home waters and bring you the latest in tackle, tactics, and techniques to help you catch more fish. Today, Mike and Aaron join Roger Blackstone for Lake Coeur d'Alene Landlock Kings. Then we cross Washington State to catch up with Mike for some Ooh. coho salmon action on Lake Washington. Oh, yeah. Now, it's time to go fishing. Presented by your local Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. We got our first fish. Roger, you did say 10 o'clock was the witching hour, <laughs> and it's probably about 9.45, so good call on that. Well, I tell you, it's these fish, they work like clockwork for you sometimes. It's, uh, it's great that we finally hooked one, and perfect. And that's, uh, oh my God, he's coming. That's exactly what I do is I, um, I try to um, talk with you with the flying counter. Woo! Beauty! Let's take a little water. Oh, so, I could see that chrome silver. Dude, just like you're doing there, that's perfect. What do you got for line out? 27. Okay, so it's on the surface right over here. I'm just turning this out a little bit because we're we're in close on the shoreline. 20. Okay, hold it there for a second. You can just kind of see what he's doing. Okay, so he's right on the surface, and we're just going to uh, stay just like that for a second. We don't get our speed. Main reason is I got this board out on this point right here. There. And so when you get, a, you get it a little closer, I just want you to take your rod tip that way. Yeah, that's a good fish. You might be a little foul hook. We'll have to see. I mean, if sometimes they if they get a little foul hook, then they're in trouble. No, that's a. That looks like it's probably. Yeah, it's, fair, huh? yeah, it's probably seven. I think pounds, he's just so. he's wore out. Oh, that's a nice fish. All right. Yeah, you can see that how prone this thing is. And they're just so Super healthy. bright. Wow. Yeah, he's a, a pretty fish. Yeah, he's, he's going to be bigger than seven. Oh, that's sweet. That is a sweet fish. Great job. Great job. Can hold it for a second? Hold it right there. Oh, 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 look at that fish. Oh, man. So sweet. So we're gonna get this thing out, uh, do a couple quick stats, and then we'll get it back in the water. Get some water going through his gills there for a second. So we got 28 inches and 28 over inches nine. And it was about nine. I think it went nine ten was the biggest on the scale there. So just under 10 pounds. This fish is just beautiful, healthy as can be, and you'll watch him just dart off here in a second, getting some nice oxygen through his gills there. Make sure he's nice and ready to go. Yeah, I think he's probably ready. And there he goes. Just like that. Beautiful Coeur d'Alene Lake Chinook. 
And we got one in the boat. Way to go, fellas. Okay, what we've got here is we've got a herring helmet. I, I like to decorate my herring helmets a little bit. This one here's got a little bit of fish scale on it, and it's orange. This bait right here happens to be a larger bait. It's a green bait, uh, green pack. So it's the largest pack of bait. You cram that head inside that helmet. And then what we've got is the system I like to use is a Gamagatsu number four. And I've got them tandem. The first hook there is uh, Snell. And I hook that about like that to try to get it kind of in, in line with the tail. So if you get a short strike, you'll catch a fish on that back hook. Otherwise, uh, you got that one that's in the meat of the body. I like to use e-chips. These e-chips are made by Pro Troll, and uh, Procure is actually uh, the, the bait and the brine that we're using right here. This orange brine is made by Procure. So we've got about an ounce and a half weight here on this one, going back to that leader where the bait's at. And I'm gonna try to tune it a little bit. You want that bait to make a, about a, it's a little fast there. You wanna, you wanna go about one to two uh, revolutions per second. So if it's a little fast like that, you just bring it back in and you can straighten it out. That's the key is getting a nice roll. Sometimes it just takes a matter of tuning it a couple times to get a, a slower roll. More Northwest Fishing Reports after the break. So this is a planer board we're going to be running, and uh, this one actually breaks down, makes it uh, nice for storage, and uh, get some surf surface lines out. So in fishing with planer boards, you've got uh, some speed changes. When you're making your turns, we like to try to do S turns and try to just speed that bait up a little bit. When you're making a, a turn, uh, say to your starboard side that port side line like we've got on this board over here will be speeding up so it's getting going a little faster that might trigger a bite the slow side probably won't trigger a bite but it's dropping and so it drops down in the water columns a little bit and then when you speed up and it starts to catch up bam it starts bringing it back up and then you might have a fish strike that way as well Wow, this is another nice fish. Oh yeah. Cordelane Chinook, you gotta love it. Well, Roger, that came off one off the uh, planer board, didn't it? Uh, it was the planer board. It was uh, two ounces of weight, and it came off the planer board. So we had just put that one out uh, maybe 15 minutes ago. Very different fight from the uh, Chinook you find in the sound. Yeah. These ones are just bulldogs. Yeah, they're, they just kind of want to just put their head down. Fat. There he is. No, that's a that right lake there, trout, isn't it? It's a lake trout. People don't believe they're out here. A lot of people don't catch But I see the catch this size bull trout. This is a bull trout. Yeah, it's, see not, all those. it's not a laker, it's a no, bull trout. No, it's not a laker. Up there is a dolly, or as they call them, bull trout. So we, that's an endangered fish. It's got to go back. Got to go back. You see the flat tail compared to, it'd be a, a big fork in there if it was a Mackinac. Yep. A lot of people don't uh, catch them that often, but this time of year, I seem to catch one or two and then Going into the summer, I'll catch them from time to time on flies. Uh, I don't seem to catch many that are too much bigger than this, but uh, they're hungry too. So that right there, folks, is a dolly. We'll get a release on it. There it goes. Roger, we're looking at the fish finder, and there's it's just lit up with a lot of fish marks, and you said those are kokanee? Yeah, the kokanee population is the feed base out here, so uh, that's what the Chinook feed on. And the schools are, well, we've got a, a better abundance of fish right now than we've had in about 25 years in the lake, so it's, the kokanee fishermen love it. And the downside is, well, way too much bait. Yeah, sometimes that when you got a lot of bait in the lake like that, then the fish are, you know, they, it's harder, a little bit more hard to trick those uh, fish with 
with something artificial when they've got all that feed in the lake for them to fish with or right. eat, you know, right. the fish to eat. So. so the name of the game is pound the water. Yep, you gotta just keep at it. Fish on! Well, there goes your fish again, Mike. It's so good. At, it's getting the big fish. There, it's trip. good at rock, paper, scissors. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. You gotta do what you gotta do. Sometimes they will just tap it like you. Uh, you didn't even notice. Release it. Yeah, no release, but feel like well, it. But just you see it. Yeah, it's a good eye. I mean, this thing obviously just maybe ate it, and then right after eating, it just started swimming with it. So. I don't think that he even really noticed when he ate it, maybe until right there at the point that you gave a little resistance to him, and now he started fighting back a little bit. You all want to go kind of like that at that angle, and just keep your rod tip that way. Oh, well, he's foul hooked a little bit. That's probably a little bit of the reason. He might have grabbed another line there. Fair hooked. Yeah, I just just I, I just in the mouth. Yeah, just pulled that one and this trailer hook got him in the gill plate. Yep. Well that's uh, kind of what it's intended to do, right? Yeah. Get that double hook set. Yep. You don't you, you don't lose too many this way. Um, you usually don't harm too many this way. This one just happened to really take that second hook and get it in the corner of its gill there. 23 inches, six and a half pounds. Good job. Man, we were all taking naps and that <laughs> clicker just went off like crazy. Woo! All right. Let's end that line now. You're fine, you're fine, just like that. Oh man, that gave us a little bit of a tussle at the end there, right? Eh? You grab that now. Nice. Well, the 215 bite came. <laughs> Two o'clock. 215 just came, and Mike just caught another one. So, what a nice way to end the day. Good job, Mike. Right. I'll say, and uh, fun fight. Feisty fish, probably about the same as the last one, and then. Five pound range, I'd yep. say, 24 inches. Yep, nice fat belly. Show that belly. Turn that belly towards the camera and you can see how fat they are. They're just eating like crazy. They throw on a lot of weight. This is probably a two year old right here, and they just throw on a weight. Uh, this fish, uh, four year maturity, probably be about 25 pounds. So they're getting bigger. If you guys want to learn more about uh, fishing on Lake Coeur d'Alene, again, check out the uh, Lake Coeur d'Alene Anglers Association webpage. Yep, you sure can do that at lcaaidaho.com. And there we go. Nice spring fish, and uh, it's been a great day. It has been. Roger, thank you so much for taking Aaron and I out. You bet. Thank you guys. It's tips and trips, new techniques and locations to expand your fishing horizons. Hell's Canyon lies on a stretch of the Snake River on the Washington Idaho border. Last June, me and my buddies Jeremy Affelt and Darren Duty had the chance to hit the canyon with Kyle Jones of Jones Sport Fishing. Kyle's been fishing these waters for years and started us off with some salmon bellies on a cannonball. We were in search of some monster sturgeon. Several reports coming out of the Snake River have sturgeon at 8, 9, even 10 feet. It didn't take long for the sturgeon to show up. The first one we hooked I landed and it was not exactly what we were looking for, kind of a little one. So we let it go. After moving to a secret hole, we hooked into something a little more promising. Yep.
planted right there. Taking line right now. He's stealing the line. It took a group effort, but at the end, we could confirm there's monster sturgeon in Hell's Canyon. Kyle really hooked us up with some nice fish and a great day on the water. If you love the outdoors, for sightseeing or fishing, Hell's Canyon belongs on your list of destinations. NorthwestFishingReports.com is the Northwest's largest fishing reports website, featuring well over 50,000 fishing reports, videos, articles, and more. All 100% free. Catch more fish with Northwest Fishing Reports. Log on today. One of the main components when you're walleye fishing, the technique we're using are what are called bottom bouncers. And these are the only bottom bouncers I've ever seen in the store, these L-shaped. But Ted, you have a different setup. And I should note, Ted does uh, a lot of walleye tournaments, so little attention to details <laughs> here. So tell us your system. Okay, I won't give away all my secrets, so Mike. Ah. Um, what I'm using is what we call a slider bottom bouncer. I have a little black clevis on here that I attach this single lead uh, weight onto. This is a uh, really simple to put on. Just push it on. Now that allows that to slide. And the reason I do that is when I've got fish that are light biting, they're allowed to pick that bait up and swim with it and the line goes through. They don't feel the weight like they would on the L shape. The L-shaped bottom bouncer, you'll see I have a chain on here. It's a chain swivel with a Duloc snap on it. These chain swivels, Ducs, all these components are available at Max Lure. In the river system, where you got a lot of current, I put a chain on here because when you're using a spinner or smile blade, this keeps your line from twisting. I don't know if you've ever fished in the current with no swivel on, your line starts twisting after a little bit of trolling. This prevents that from happening. Another nice fish using Max components and a UV holographic smile blade. Northwest Fishing Reports. Like us on Facebook to keep up with the action. Hi everyone, we're out here on Lake Washington 
and it's uh, October 10th. We are in pursuit of coho salmon. There's a four fish limit out here. It's evening, and that's not the best time to go after these guys, but you can catch them. You can catch these fish trolling. We just caught a caught one on a uh, little plug here. You can catch them drifting and jigging with uh, buzz bombs and the like. Our first fish wasn't a coho, it was a nice rainbow. And this lake is full of beautiful fish, rainbows, cutthroats. This guy measured right at 18 inches. Now, be sure to check the regs because depending on the time of year, some of these fish, if they're over 20 inches, have to be released because they're considered to be steelhead. They want to protect the steelhead, obviously, coming in. Fifty feet deep with a plug, we're fishing off of Hunts Point heading towards Kirkland. I was watching the uh, fish finder, it was just lit up with fish. Nineteen inches. What a fish. But still looking for a coho, I guess. Alright, now we got a coho. No doubt about it. Woo. So 50 feet, 50 feet on the down rigger. Nice. One of those great urban fisheries. We showed you Duwamish, and this is, whoa, nice. Lake Washington, coho. Oh, there he is. Look at that guy go. Look at that. That's a beautiful fish. Big old hook nose silver. It's got some color to it, but it's looking good. Let's take a look at some of the gear that we used and some gear that works well for coho on Lake Washington. First off, we've got your standard little eight inch flasher with a hoochie. Uh, about an 18 to 22 inch liter seems to work pretty well. You don't want to be trolling as fast on uh, the lake as you would out on the saltwater where you're going to be going three, three and a half miles saltwater on the lake you're going to be looking for that 1.4 to 2 mile an hour troll. So just enough to maybe make it flip over every once in a while but um, these fish are not going to go generally after fast aggressive presentations. Uh, another trolling setup is a dodger and in this case we've got a mini hoochie with a spinner or you could use a max smile blade on the front end of that um, and with these uh, hoochie rigs you could try using a little shrimp on there for some flavor enhancement uh, uh, bait never seems to hurt so you give that a try as far as what we caught our fish on today uh, this uh, mag lip style plug green pink uh, tail we caught two nice rainbow in that in that hook nose uh, coho on this guy right here. I've had success in the past as well with the uh, Brad's little wigglers here, pirate and blue. These have both caught fish for me out there on Lake Washington in years past. And um, of course, we were doing trolling, but you can also drift and do um, buzz bombs and uh, and uh, jig for these fish as well. Try different things, switch up your gear every 20-30 minutes so you're giving these fish different presentations and just keep pounding away and see what they like. 
Um, sometimes it can be very lockjaw, but other days you can you can get your limits. So go on out and get them. <laughs>